One thing that is rather easy to implement but will add a little punch or kick to your animations is uh, the ability for your character to lean when uh, you're rotating. In real life, when we're running and rotating at the same time turning, our body will naturally lean towards the inside to compensate for angular velocity. You know, if you're imagining that you're running in circle, then your body will lean towards the center of that circle. Now, it's something that you might not always think about when you play games, but if you don't have that, something will feel off. When you add this, you will drastically improve the visuals of your project. Guys, it's very good to see you again. My name is Matt and this is Technically Animation. Okay, so we'll start by creating our uh, the animations that we'll be using uh, to apply the lean. So you have technically two options. The first one would be to duplicate your run forward animation so that one is leaning left one is leaning right, and then you would create a blend space, and then you would steer the direction of, of leaning inside that blend space. The second option, and that's the one I'll use, is to um, create additive poses that you'll apply on top of your locomotion. Now, this has some pros and cons, of course. If you were to duplicate your cycles, then you would have a little bit more control on the animation it, uh, themselves and how they actually look. Uh, the additive approach is a lighter in the creation of content and in my opinion just a little bit more uh, elegant. So I'll start by, um, I'll create a new folder that I will call additive just to make things a little bit more organized and I'll go in there and then, uh, no actually I'm gonna go back here and I'll go ahead and duplicate my uh, run forward animation and I will uh, name this one seven stun run lean. And let's start with left. I'm gonna move it to the additive folder so that it's cleaner and clearer. And let's open up this one. We can pause the play, but we want to make sure we're on the very first frame. And then we do right click, remove from frame one to frame X, depending on the number of frames your animation has because we want to reduce that uh, as uh, just only one frame. So uh, the second thing I want to do is uh, make sure it, that animation is additive. So, and so down here uh, in the additive, we'll do local space. Make sure you choose local space um, and then selected animation frame. And you want to look for your run forward animation and you want to double check, but this will be good by default that the uh, reference frame index is set to zero. Uh, so that technically we're calculating the additive um, from the first pose of your uh, run cycle. And now we're going to grab the pelvis of our character. Let's uh, switch to uh, world transforms. And uh, what, I would, what I suggest you to do is just to enable the grid snapping for rotation here. Um, that way you'll have uh, consistent values of rotating your character towards the left and the right. And so this is uh, lean left, so we'll have to tilt our character towards its left, which in our case is going to be our right. And then making sure you're on the first frame here, you want to set a key as an additive pose. Um, that way you're um, modifying that animation. You want to save that. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that animation. Call it run lean right. Let's open this up. And then in this case, we'll simply tilt the character back to its original pose. And then once again, towards its right. And then same thing, make sure you're on the first frame, set a key. The curve will be modified. Now we've um, added a lean right key to that animation. And then we'll duplicate it one last time for, uh, we'll call this one Renly Neutral. And that's gonna be just a regular pose. So what we can do is open this up and we'll simply remove something I should have done uh, in the beginning. But we'll just remove the um, modifications that we made to the previous animations. We're gonna save that. And that's actually no leaning. 
and that's going to be at the center of a blend space where we're actually running forward and not moving either the cursor or the mouse um, so that the blend space has a pose to calculate from which makes things just a little bit more precise and now we'll create the one-dimensional blend space that will steer uh, between the different poses so remember uh, 1D, bl 1D blend spaces are under legacy in the animation menu I choose my skeleton and this one will be called blend space run lean okay let's open up that go to the asset details uh, so for the horizontal axis that's going to be the, the variable we'll create it a second uh, I'm gonna use just leaning angle Ma minimum axis value will be minus one maximum one you can leave the divisions to four that's fine I'll just uh, check snap to grid and I will use a smoothing time of 0.3 seconds okay now uh, for the preview base pose since we're gonna we're creating a, an additive a blend an additive blend space um, we'll use actually you know what let's just uh, place our animations on the graph first so I'll go ahead and place the neutral on zero oh actually I don't know why probably because I did that in the in the in the past but I I wanted to show you that uh, that trick so let reset this property okay so um, I'll show you I'll show you that in a second so neutral goes to leaning as a lean angle of zero uh, lean angle of one would be leaning towards the right and then left for minus one okay if I preview leaning left sorry right and then left and neutral here okay and now if you want to double check everything it keeps coming back what you can do in the preview base pose here is just to select the animation that you'll uh, that will be playing underneath the the additive blend space and the additive poses. And now, if you play, you have your animation moving, and then you can preview your leaning angles and see that your character starts to bank in one side or and the other. Pretty cool. All right, let's pause and close this. Now what we need to do is to create the variable that will um, influence our blend space uh, and that will drive the leaning angle. Okay, and then I'll go to the uh, the even graph and I'm gonna uh, and I'm gonna need to uh, create that that uh, that calculation here. So what I'll do uh, for the sake of organizing things, is that I'll use a function um, which we'll call set lean angle. Now, what's, uh, what we're about to calculate is uh, quite complex, so I'll try to give you explanations, but I don't want to go into too many details uh, during that video. Um, I'll do a separate one in my uh, Unreal Under 90 Seconds um, series where I'll, go, I'll try to go uh, more into exactly what each step does so that you have uh, your, your, your mind wraps around the concepts. It's a lot of uh, mathematics, uh, not a lot of, but just a little bit. So if you feel lost, it's fine. Uh, just follow along. I'll try to give you um, instructions and uh, explanations as we go. So what we essentially want to do here is to uh, calculate how fast the character is turning. So we want to get the rotation of the character. We want to calculate the delta between one frame and the previous, and we want to see how fast we're turning. So the first thing we want to do is to actually get the direction of the character. So we're going to go ahead and grab uh, the reference to our character in the, in the function. And then we'll want to get the um, actor rotation of that character. And then we want to break that rotator. I'm sorry, break rotator. And we want to focus on the yaw, which is the rotation on the ground as if you were turning a car. And then uh, the yaw is gonna, we'll promote that to a variable, which we'll call character yaw. Now, we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, drop that character yaw as a get. And then from this, we'll create a new variable that we'll call previous character yaw. 
and you want to make sure that this uh, the the set of that variable is placed before your character y'all. And the reason behind this is because when that function will be uh, calculated, each time it gets calculated, uh, we get the current rotation or current yaw of our character. And then we're going to have a reference uh, to the value of the rotation of the previous frame, which will give you a delta, which is how much we've turned. So now that we have these two variables, we're going to go ahead and uh, drag both of them in here and we'll uh, subtract them to just do a comparison because we want to subtract the current yaw to the previous yaw. So we'll do subtract and then make sure the character yaw is placed first, is plugged in first and then the previous one is placed second. And now out of that uh, operation is going to be a new variable that we'll call character yaw delta. Again, this is essentially how much you've turned from uh, during the, the previous, so sorry, from the current frame, uh, between the current frame and the previous frame, sorry. I'm gonna connect this one, make that just a little bit tighter. Okay, now, so we have technically a distance, right? This is how much you've turned. Now we wanna convert that to how fast we've turned. So we have a distance, we want to convert that to a speed. If you remember maybe some uh, lessons yeah, at, back at school, you want to divide that by time so that you have a distance uh, per a time unit, which essentially gives you a speed. So the way we do that is that we'll divide it by the uh, delta time, which is the uh, time of a frame running in our game. So you should have uh, by default a reference to that. So we can uh, control grab delta time x here, and then um, we'll perform a safe divide, which is essentially a regular division, unless if it's uh, zero, it won't throw an error just for um, safety. So make sure your delta time is plugged as the B and your UL delta as A. And now you're out of this, you would have uh, the speed, like how fast you've turned. Now, I found that this was way too sensitive. So we're gonna go ahead and, and that's gonna be the last operation of that function. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and divide this uh, by an arbitrary number. Uh, this is really up to you uh, how, that, how big that number will be. I found that uh, 200 was the uh, the kind of uh, sensitivity I wanted for my character to lean. So I'll just do a divide here and then I'll input 200. And uh, actually, I'm sorry, this is going to be the very last operation. Um, we'll clamp that angle, clamp angle between minus one and one. If you remember, this is the values we used in our blend spaces to set up the different poses. Um, that's just to keep things a little bit more uh, clear, I guess. You don't have to do that, but it's just way easier to steer uh, if you know that minus one and one are gonna be the extreme leaning angles, and then zero would be neutral. And finally, out of that uh, clamp, then we can do uh, promote to variable lean angle. And now let's be sure to drag that out. And then we can send a return node and plug it back. All right, so this is our function. I'm gonna save this. And now of course we want to go back to our even graph and make sure our uh, function is plugged somewhere because right now we've created a function but it's not being used. So, um, what I'll simply do is so I'll move these calculations out of the way a little bit. And what I can do is just add a pin. I will drag my function here. And then I'll drag a pin to it. So it's starting to be just a little bit disorganized, but for the purpose of the video, it's fine. I just want to make sure that 
it's it's in there. Actually, if we want to double check, it's working fine. What we can do here is just do a simple print, print string, uh, and then send our lean angle and see if we get something. Yeah, so at least we know that the function is getting executed properly. And as you can see on the left, if I turn left, I get negative values. You know, I'm slightly turning now, I'm about 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and then if I turn really fast, I, I, I reach to one. So now obviously our character doesn't do anything because we'll have to apply the additive blend space onto, uh, on top of our locomotion. So let's do just that. I'm gonna go back to my anim graph, go to the walk run state, and then I'm gonna focus on that. Um, chunk here. So we'll drag, we can simply drag our lean blend space onto the scene. Now it requires lean angle as the uh, uh, input, of course. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and drag our uh, variable in there. And then, so you can disconnect this here because we'll have something in between. And what we wanna do is um, use a node that's called apply additive. So base will be our locomotion, the additive would be our additive blend space, and then the result of the applied additive we send to the output. We can compile, save. I'm actually gonna go back to my function, remove the print, and then run the game. See what happens. And see it's subtle, but it's just a tiny bit of nuance uh, that gives a little more life to a character. Now you could also argue about the pose itself. Usually when you're leaning, especially if you're leaning hard, you would have more of a C shape where it's not your body is not leaning uh, like that, but your upper uh, torso will compensate a little bit. And so when you look at a character, it would more like be in a C shape and not exactly, you know, um, straight. But, you know, for the purpose of the video, it's enough and then uh, you, are, uh, you have all the liberty to uh, work on that and have the exact fine tunings and detail that you want. So with a tiny bit of mathematics and just a few poses that we extracted from an existing animation, we were able to drastically improve the visuals of our locomotion. And usually we love when things are easy and when they add a lot to something. It was good to see you guys. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.